Are you learning a lot today? Yeah. Good, good, good. That's what we want. Um, what do you have the fried chicken, though? You're going to really love your health department. <laughs> so they've done a ma magnificent job getting everybody here and, and uh, making sure that they get all this knowledge and wisdom that everybody has imparted to you correctly. How many police officers do we have here? Are you all undercover? It's <laughs> all right. Fire service? Okay. How about uh, health care? All right. And um, well, in any event, you've all been introduced to Belle, so I'm going to ask Tom to call her down and she can get out of my way. Just call her, Tom. Uh, basically, when do you need a bed bug detection dog? If you're finding bed bugs in your premises or uh, your domicile, you don't need one because you've already found it. So it'd be a ba a an absolute waste, waste of money. We've inspected over 13,000 units over the past three years. That's dormitories for colleges, hospital rooms, apartments, homes. And uh, it's been a very, very interesting experience. I've, I've learned a, a great deal. Uh, Bella herself is a trained uh, scent detection dog for live bed bugs and viable eggs. She is um, not food rewarded. She eats only human, human food. Uh, three o'clock rolls around, I better be close to Wendy's or Burger King uh, <laughs> because that's what she wants and the reason why she eats human food is because when we're out in the uh, commercial areas, when we're out in the nursing homes, in the hotel rooms, there's food all over the place. So I want her to have no interest in any of that food whatsoever. She gets a pound of roast beef or turkey just before we head out to our job. I make sure she has a good poop, she potties, <laughs> and then she's ready to go because I don't want her mind focused on any of those needs. Um, one of your questions is going to probably be, how accurate is she? And really, the information that's out there, they say that bed bug dogs are 95 to 98% accurate. Your bed bug detection dog should be 100% accurate. And that's the bottom line. Going back to the days when we were out looking for human remains, live or missing people. If my dog, if I told somebody, the commander, oh, we got a hit, I better come up with either a dead body or an arm or a live person. And that's all there is to it. I don't believe in this air factor. You have to have absolute accuracy. Now, there are factors that will impede that, that accuracy. And those are basically environmental factors where if we're walking into a unit and there's been smoke, She's going she's gonna to start sneezing, and it has a very, very detrimental effect on them. They just, it shuts down the olfactory system. Insecticides. If you have treated your house or, your dom or, or any area, and it hasn't been for at least 30 days, I won't bring her in because we've had some very, very bad experiences with that. And I'm going to give you an example of how, what happened. We went out, we were called out to a hotel. And at that hotel, there were bed bugs all over the walls, all over the bed, all over the ceiling. Gave it the command to go in because they wanted to see how the dog works and if it alerts. Tried to throw her up on a bed, tried to get her alert. She walked right out the room. And it took me six months to figure out why she did not want to stay in that room. And later on, uh, the people who asked me to come down, the extermination company, said that they had put insecticide pyrethrins in there about two hours before. So it has a very, very, very negative effect on them. In, in our experience, it's 30. In some cases, if, you've, if a lot of insecticide has been put down, it may be 45 days before it really dissipates for the dog to come in and check that area for you. Uh, Needless to say, I was very upset when I found, found out about that. 
Bella is a certified bed bug detection dog. Let me pull up the certification here. There we go. Um, there are currently three organizations out there that say they certify bed bug detection dogs. Um, this one we chose because uh, they were not tied into the sales of dogs. So that was our purpose for selecting the IBBMA. These people sold no dogs, had no interest in training dogs or anything like that. They were there to legitimately just certify bed bug detection dogs. Um, that's, that's very, very important. Um, also in the testing process, you want to make sure that your dog does not alert to dead bed bugs. We're only concerned with live bed bugs and viable eggs, nothing more than that. And the reason why we know that Bella only detects live bed bugs and viable eggs and no dead bed bugs is because we have gone through, taken her to units or, or houses or homes that were going to be heat treated within a matter of minutes. So we would take the dog in and um, she would certainly alert in different areas. As a matter of fact, uh, give you a case, case in history, um, Akron Metropolitan Housing Authority, who we do, uh, brought down a heat treating company to test their equipment. Uh, I took both of my dogs through. They alerted all over the place. The one exterminator that works for them came out. Did they, did they alert here? And I go, yeah, they were all over the place. Because 45 days before they had treated, they couldn't find any bed bugs. Once they put the heat in, they all start coming out. So they realized how accurate and effective the dogs can be. And the next day we took the dogs in to recheck. And of course, they had no alerts at all. They, they, were, uh, they had no interest in the place at all. And that's really what happen happens with the heat. It turns all the sense benign. Uh, the other interesting thing that we've come across is that Bella is able to roll in and roll out other insects. And I don't know, has anybody talked about um, carpet beetles today? Have you heard the word? Someone mentioned carpet beetles here? Okay, carpet beetles, um, if you go home tonight, because hopefully someone will talk about it, and I'm not a exter licensed exterminator, but on the very, very first inspection I ever did with Bella, it was over uh, on the Euclid Cleveland border. And we went through this house, and Bella alerted to nothing. This woman said, I have a sea formation of bites here. I've got bed bugs here. I go, look, she says there's nothing here. There's nothing here. So what happened is we took a vacuum cleaner and did what's called specific vacuuming, where we would stick a nylon sock into the actual beginning tube of it, and we started vacuuming specific areas. We'd had area one, two, three, four, five. We'd pull everything out on a piece of paper, a uh, piece of white paper, and designate that pull from area one, two, three, four, five, because you had this nylon net that was catching anything. And what we found out was that she had carpet beetles. So, uh, you know, you may still, you know, this woman was getting, it looked like bed bug bites, but it was really from carpet beetles. They, they did the appropriate uh, work to clean the house up and had no more problems. Now, since then, I've been on five other incidents, and Rick Novickis from the uh, health department will verify this one that we did in Mayfield Heights. It was for a doctor and who had a PhD in environmental sciences. And there's nothing I love more than educating those people who have more credentials than I do. <laughs> One took her through the house, no bed bugs. He says, what? He said, we just traveled a month ago. And he says, well, then what's this? He showed me his arm. It was all red and inflamed and blot blotches. And then and, and I go, well, look, do you have a garden? Uh, no. Well, have you seen any little bugs that, you know, maybe look furry or black or brown? He said, yeah, there's three in my bed. Well, that was it. It was carpet beetle. And I've had another incident with a medical doctor where the daughter was getting uh, affected by the carpet beetles. They actually don't bite. They have these kind of furry spines which seem to have some sort of 
venom on them or something like that. It's, you know, something that irritates the skin and it looks like a bed bug bite. And, uh, and since then I've done six homes where it was carpet beetles and not bed bugs. <coughs> Had an incident in Medina a couple months back. And uh, this guy was like going crazy. He was burning up and inflamed and rolled out bed bugs. What was it? It was carpet beetles. So those are other factors that really come into play that we would have never known about had it not been for the dog. So um, in any event, um, we had one incident where we went to Columbus and a woman was getting bit up. She had all kinds of bites, look like, uh, look like bed bugs. And uh, no bed bugs in the house. Determined that it was spider mite bites that was causing it. She was always out in the garden. So we said, okay, here's what you got to do. <laughs> Wrap yourself up, tape everything off so that the spiders don't get into you. And as a result, she never had a problem again. Um, as you can see, I don't do this every day. But, um, let's see. <coughs> Let's talk about proactivity. Uh, those people who uh, use us have found it tremendously beneficial where you have an apartment building. Uh, what you want to do is you need a baseline to figure out who's infected and who's not. And what we found out is that 30 to 40 percent of those people don't even show bed bug bites. We went into a, a public housing apartment last year. There was a woman there. She had no bites on her at all. The place is infested with bed bugs. They didn't even know it until the dog came in. Uh, so th those are factors that come into play. You need to know who has the bed bugs so that now you can identify the problem and begin appro appropriate treatment. Uh, when you've got people who you can't identify them from because they don't even know they're being bit, or that you have the 20% that won't tell you that they have them because they have the fear of the wrath of uh, management, uh, evicting them, then when you take a dog up to that door, it makes them very honest very, very quickly. <laughs> now, we've done a lot of vehicles, too, I might add. And we found, she alerts, what happens is when you, when you have a vehicle, we just pull one door open. It's got to be all closed up. And what's happening is that she's detecting the volatile organic compounds that creates a specific sense signature. That's what she's picking up. We all express scent signatures, specific scent signatures here, from our volatile organic compounds that are being released. And that's what she identifies. So when we open the door on the vehicle, she sits, boom, it's hot, it's gotta be treated. She doesn't sit, then you don't have a problem. Did you get that, Jamie? <laughs> okay. So in any event, um, it's a very, very simple process. Uh, let's see what else we've got here. Okay, let's talk about. Uh, look, I'm not, I'm not an advocate of any any uh, technology for getting rid of your bed bugs. We come to the, your house, your apartment, or anything like that. You pay us. You pay us one fee. We don't care if you got bed bugs or not. The bottom line is, you know, that's up to you to determine what you want to do. You're going to look at you're going to look at detection methods. Um, you have human detection, which <laughs> we follow behind crews of bed bug inspectors, and they couldn't find anything. And then she would come in and she would detect it. The uh, problem was back then, three years back, um, you know, they weren't going to tear the carpeting apart or anything like that. But that's where the dogs got a bad name saying, well, they're, they're not reliable and all that sort of thing. Now, what you have to learn is if your dog says they're there, they're there. Because you have to rule out any other reason for her not to say that they're there when they're not there. And you have to believe in your dog. That's all there is to that. Uh, getting back to 
monitors, the one gentleman here I think was from Rose, he talked about the best thing for determining, aside from dogs, was the interceptors. Those are utterly, <laughs> utterly effective. And they're cheap. So you can always you know, refer to that sort of thing. The other monitors, the uh, so-called sensors that are go around, I have to wait to see the evidence on that, but I, as a hazardous materials instructor in the past where we worked with those electronic noses, they didn't work very effectively for us. So I don't know why the technology would have improved that much. I know there are people out there trying to detect cancer with electronic noses because they see the effectiveness of the dog. So I think we're going to leave it there. Tom, how much of time have I spent so far? Huh? Let's talk about construction buildings, okay, where we have found most of the be most bugs proliferate. Uh, where you have concrete floors, ceilings, and walls, you have a better chance of stopping them from uh, migrating. Where we found the problems is more problems of them going next door to the next apartment or down is where you have your plywood floors and your, your, dry, your drywall. But the old, the old uh, strategy of where, hey, you have one apartment or, or one uh, hotel room, it's room 201, well, you better be 202 and, and uh, two, uh, 200, and then up and down, that, <laughs> that's a myth. Um, it doesn't, doesn't work that way. What we found out is that uh, most of this stuff is not so much from the migration, uh, as it is from just people coming into your apartments and, or your hotel rooms and bringing the bugs in because they're traveling. So, um, over that. And those people who have apartment buildings and, and ho hotels, um, one of the things you might think about is pro proactive bed bug inspections because where would you rather stay? Where would you rather live? Would you rather stay at a hotel that you knew which was being checked by a, a uh, certified bed bug detection dog? Or uh, would you rather stay in an apartment building that you know is being checked on a periodical basis for bed bugs by a reliable certified bed bug detection dog? And not to mention, it's a great PR. I do one of the major hotels down here th three, four times a year in Cleveland and I mean, it, this is, it's a five-star hotel. Uh, they have the lowest incidence of complaints out of all their hotels throughout the country because they're doing proactive bed bug inspections. And, you know, we walk through the halls and people will say, what's that? Are you doing drugs? Or, no, no, we're looking for bed bugs. And, they, and they, they're thrilled that that hotel is taking the initiative and the diligence to be able to do something like that. And they go down and talk to the managers and say, this is great. We really appreciate it. We'll be back. So... Um, in any event, most of the other stuff that has been really covered, that's why I'm kind of the piecemeal here. I don't want to you know, go over things that you've already been exposed to, but the last thing we're going to tell you is that um, sleep tight and don't let the bed bugs bite.